In this lesson, we will look at creating SOAP web services using the Spring Framework in our Jakarta Java Enterprise Edition 8 web application. In order to understand SOAP web services, we will cover what is the primary goal of SOAP web services. Then we will look at the W3C definition of SOAP web services. And finally, we will look at the key characteristics of SOAP web services. We will do a SOAP web services overview where we will look at these three sections. First, the SOAP client service architecture, where clients make state transitions and servers process requests and return resources. We will look at the contract first design using a whistle document, and we will review the challenges, which includes complexity, cumbersome and error-prone processes, and the fact that it's not suitable for agile development environments. Next, we will look at how to use Spring Web Services for SOAP. First, we'll look at the required Maven dependencies. Then we'll look at how to create a SOAP endpoint for our charity registration web application. We'll Find out how to write our contract first whistle document. We'll look at the charity registration and form XML sample documents. We'll add our SOAP dispatcher servlet configuration to our Spring MVC web app. And finally, we will be creating the SOAP endpoint in Java. Then, after we've created the SOAP endpoint, we will test our SOAP web service endpoints. we we'll look at how to test it. we we'll look at choosing testing tool. And we will use our chosen testing tool. Now we are going to go over to our course documentation. We look at our documentation branch and go to our GitHub page. From here, we go to Spring Framework Enterprise Development, and we go down to creating SOAP web services with the Spring Framework, and we will look at understanding SOAP web services. Web services provide a means for third-party clients to interact with our Spring Web MVC service layer to execute business logic and perform data retrieval or persistence. In the following lesson, we will explore SOAP web services. Our focus will be on providing and implementing web services rather than client implementation. The primary goal of web services is to enable seamless interaction and integration of diverse systems over the internet. This capability makes it easier to build distributed applications, leveraging the strengths of different systems and platforms to work together efficiently. These lessons will guide you through the essentials of web services helping you understand how to implement them effectively in your projects. Now we look at the W3C definition of SOAP Web Services. It is a software system designed to support interoperable machine-to-machine -machine interaction over a network. The key characteristics is standard interfaces, using XML messaging systems for communications and interoperability, the facilitation of interaction across different applications and 
platforms by adhering to web standards and protocol support. Common protocols such as HTTP, SOAP, and the rest. We have a service description, and it is described using a whistle. A web services description language document, and that is used for discovering the web services. Services can be discovered using UDDI, Universal Description Discovery and Integration, and there is also loose coupling for the services. The service and the client can evolve independently as long as the interface contract is maintained. Now let's go back. And we'll go to our next step, which is SOAP Web Services Overview. SOAP involves a client-server architecture where clients make state transitions through actions and servers process the requests and return the resources. The data exchange can be in various formats such as JSON, XML, or plain text all of which are transmitted over the TCP IP stack. It is a contract first design where we use the whistle, which is a verbose XML document defining the location of the web servers, the structure of the XML document sent to and received from the SOAP endpoint, it is written in XML schema definition. And before you do anything, you have to create this contract. And then you can go and code your web services. There are challenges involved in terms of complexity. The SOAP protocol has a root SOAP envelope XML with complicated nested XML elements. Designing this is a cumbersome and error-prone process. It is also less suitable for agile development and business analysts preferring the iterative discovery of business rules. Yeah, business analysts like to play around with their spreadsheets and, uh, you know, they change a few entries in the spreadsheets here and then you spend a day and a half updating the SOAP document. The more modern replacement, or rather the preferable one of doing things today, is called REST Web Services. So the key differences is we have the predefined whistle to define the structure of the format of the messages. It is dependent on the protocol of this message format, and it's definitely less flexible than the rest. SOAP actions are defined within the whistle, whereas REST uses the HTTP standard verbs, such as get, put, etc. Now, of course, there is advantages in terms of standards and security. It provides robust standards and security features, making it suitable for enterprise level applications and then the formal contract is a documentation of a legally binding contract in uh, the sort of environments where that is useful uh, such as healthcare with heavy regulation or of course banking and finance and in summary SOAP web services are defined by extensive and detailed contracts promoting strict structure but facing challenges in agility and simplicity. Now back to Eclipse and we'll take stock of where we are and where we are going. So we will run our charity Spring MVC web application. Log in. 
and we'll select create a charity registration and this is our web ui now obviously we are going to implement web services so we need to have a way of encapsulating all the elements in this create registration form and obviously with soap we will use xml and then as we do a submit we also want a return of whether our entry or our registration creation has been successful now we are going to go back to our soap course documentation and we'll look at using spring web services for soap with xml xsd and whistle so here we see spring web services enforced a contract first approach to development meaning you must define your xml schema before anything else now we just looked at our form and this is what the xml would look like if it comes from an external system so we have charity registration id username subject body created date and then two file attachments and we see that all the data of the attachments is included in this xml so in order to encapsulate that in our soap document we need a registration request which basically just kind of wraps around our previous xml and then we also need a charity registration response which is the response we expect back from our system in case the registration was successful with the id the status code and the status message so now what we'll do is we'll use an open source tool to generate the xsd schema for us from these xml documents so we'll use freeformatter.com so let's go to freeformatter.com and you see here you can either copy and paste your xml or you can upload your file so let's do that so we'll go back to our course documentation we'll cut and paste the charity registration request feed it into free formatter and we keep it defaulted to russian doll and we say generate xsd and down here it gives the generated xsd for us with the schema the xml element so what we'll do is we'll go back into eclipse we'll store the generated charity registration request in an xsd file we will do the same for the charity registration response we'll store the generated xsd from preformatter then from our charity registration request we do some comments and manual manipulation and then we use that to create a manual soap envelope and you can see essentially what we do is we surround it with soap and we have the generated request for us we do the same with the soap out where we have the charity registration out response we do the same with the manual creation of our soap envelope now that we've collected our first cut as it were of our xml and xsd documents we will have a look at using a maven archetype to generate a spring web services for soap project so we'll follow along with the instructions here we'll open eclipse we'll launch a new project we'll select maven project and 
we will select the Spring Web Services archetype. We will define the following project coordinates for our Maven projects. And we will look at our generated context XML files. Then we will add the necessary configurations to generate the SOAP whistle automatically. This typically involves defining beans for default whistle 11 definition and XSD schema. We will create the service layer in our source main Java directory with a new package and Java interface for our SOAP service. We will create an implementation class of our SOAP service interface and we will implement the SOAP endpoint. By defining an endpoint class, we create a new class and annotate it with endpoint and then we will map our requests to our methods using payload root, request payload and response payload notations to map incoming SOAP requests to appropriate methods. Now switching to Eclipse, we right click on our project and instead of new project we will select new Maven module and we will call the module Spring Web Service Charity Registration. We'll leave the advanced section blank. We look at our catalogs. We have Maven Central, we have default and internal. And we search for the group ID of the Spring Web Services archetype. And we see the latest version available to us is 214 release. We select next. And we select Run Archetype Generation Interactively and Finish. The interactive means we say Yes here. And it looks like it's finished building and it's in the process of generating the project from the archetype for us. Here is the created project. So we look at the POM file. We see the dependency. We see it's uh, quite outdated. So we're going to have to do a lot of updating with uh, Java 1.5 and Tomcat 1.1. We see our version is 100 snapshot. And if we look at source main resources, we don't see anything, so what we see in our config here is inside the web XML, a message dispatcher servlet, and we also see a annotation driven Spring Web Service servlet design. So this is obviously sort of just a template a starting point that we're going to need to manipulate to get to a working example. Now saving some time by not typing everything in and just going over what we are doing to upgrade the generated project. We'll start with the POM XML. We change the generated name. We update the URL to our relevant course documentation. Now later on we're going to use the Apache CXF package to generate our Java classes from the XSD that we have just done. And we see here we update our Maven compiler plugin, we update to Java version 11, do some more Maven plugin updates, and then we add our Apache CXF plugin for code generation and we specify where we are going to place our charity registration xd document then looking at the web.xml once again we change the display name 
we add a transform whistle location for our code generation. We keep the servlet name as generated by the Maven archetype. Then we look at the generated Spring WS servlet.xml, which is our generated Spring context file. This is the annotation driven notation that we use to pick up the add payload root and add endpoint. We also add a component scan for our base package. Then we add the dynamic whistle generation element here, where we specify the location of the charity registration service. Now let's look at the cogeneration of the XSD. So if we go into source main resources, what we plug in in this location is our soap in and soap out wrapped around our soap schema. The point here is the plugin will read this document and it will generate the code for us. So let's run it. Our build was successful. So when we look in our target, we see generated plugin markers and generated sources. So if we look at the generated directory, we see the charity registration request, which maps to the definitions in the XSD file, and we see the charity registration response which maps to the response definition in our XSD file. To recap, first we used free formatter to take the XML document and turn it into an XSD document. Then we manipulated it so we can see the request in and the request out. And then using that XSD document, we generated our code. And everything is sort of just in a template state. We do need to do a lot more work. Now let's revisit our palm.xml and we see we match the Spring WS core version to a version that works with Java 11. We add the following dependencies for our endpoint whistle document generation, whistle for j XML SOAP, and XML messaging. Then if we go to our Spring servlet, we see we upgraded to version 4 here. We still have the annotation driven component scan. And this is the endpoint where we want to host our dynamically generated whistle and this is how we are going to access it when we look at our web xml this is where we also upgrade to version 4 of the web definition and we see we added the transform whistle locations we load the servlet on startup we keep the servlet name and mapping the other thing we will do is move our charity registration into web INF XSD so that it can now be picked up by the web application as it is being run. So let's run our web application and see if we get that whistle generated as run on server. Now, it did launch the application, but it gave us a 405 error. This is kind of what we're expecting because we haven't done any actual coding yet. But let's look at whether we can see that generated whistle. And now we have the whistle generated at the endpoint, which will help any clients and help us with our further 
coding and implementation. Now going back to our course documentation on the Maven archetype, we have now come to the point where we are able to generate the whistle at the endpoint, which is step two over here. And then we go and start implementing our SOAP endpoint. So this first step will be going to the source main Java directory and we'll create a new package and a Java interface for our service. Then we will create the implementation class for the service interface and we will after that define the SOAP endpoint class which we annotate with add endpoint and in this class we map our requests to methods and once that is implemented if we go back we will start testing our SOAP web service endpoint in our case we will choose the SOAP UI open source tool to test our endpoint. We'll go to the SOAP UI website. We'll create a new SOAP project and we will import our whistle and test it. And now back to Eclipse. And we have previously enabled the whistle generation. So now we are going to create the new package and Java interface for our service in the source main Java directory. So here is our new package. Here is our charity registration service. And it is important that the name match up with the whistle generated whistle port type. And we look at our service implementation class and we see what we are doing here is we create a charity response we set the values to registration successful we set a hard-coded id a status code and an ok we also have some console logging here we go back to our documentation then we define the SOAP endpoint class where we use the annotations of endpoint payload route request payload and response payload so here is our endpoint so we specify the endpoint specify the name space and then we specify the use of our charity registration service and using spring auto wired to inject it in then we have a payload root of our namespace and the local port and we also return a response payload and essentially we have the quest payload going in and we call the registration service charity registration with the request coming in and if we open our implementation this is what we just looked at now back to our documentation and we look at testing our spring soap endpoints we are going to use an open source tool called soap ui we will go to the soap ui website and download it we will download the windows version save it we will run the downloaded executable select what we want to look at use accept the agreement next next finish and here is our soap ui and we have a test soap envelope that we are going to use send to our charity registration service endpoint now where do we get that whistle that we use in soap 
we use our generated whistle, specifically the soap in part. And we see we're going to need to clean up some of this. And we have it running now. So if we go back to our SOAP UI, we submit the request. We see we get a 200 response. And if we look at the XML, we see the response with the registration ID, status code, status message. XML namespace and registration successful. And if we go back to our endpoint and our implementation, here is all the values that our SOAP endpoint returned. So now we finally have a successful SOAP implementation end to end from the Maven archetype. What we just learned with using the Maven archetype, we will apply that knowledge to our Spring Web MVC. So obviously, we've gone through the XML, the Maven archetype, and the Maven dependencies. So what's going to be different here is the Spring configuration. And first, we'll see there is an update to the Bootstrap class. If we go to our source main java config and we look at our bootstrap class we see the root context the web application context with the spring dispatcher and a single load on startup and then we look at the servlet context so going back to our bootstrap and here we see the charity registration bean for Spring Web Services has been added. It defines the port, location, and the target namespace. And there is another one that turns the XSD schema. And if we go back to the documentation, we see we also create a SOAP servlet context configuration. So let's look at it in the code here. It's the SOAP message factory, getting the SOAP version and returning the factory. It uses the SOAP servlet context, which we also kind of used in the Maven archetype example. So let's look at that one. That one is going to be in our resources. So here is the XML definition, dynamic whistle, port type, location, and XSD location. So now let's see if our migration to our charity Spring MVC web application works and we can hit the endpoint the same way we did in our Maven archetype examples. First, we clean our project. We clean out our web server and then we run the full Maven clean install on the whole project. And then to be safe, we just clean it again. And now that we've built it and cleaned it, let's run it. And we are used to this. So let's look at if the whistle gets generated. There we see our SOAP whistle being generated. And now let's go over to SOAP UI and test the actual endpoint. Here is our incoming SOAP registration request. Here we see our Charity Spring MVC endpoint. When we submit, get a 200 okay and when we look at our xml we see the same response we saw in our maven archetype so now we have a working soap endpoint in our charity spring web services registration application 
And that concludes this tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.